Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. This week, we'll direct our attention to Sweden for the highly anticipated Superior Challenge 8 card. And in the second round, we'll talk to UFC heavyweight Stipe Miocic getting ready for his big UFC on Fuel main event, plus 12 more finalists for Clip of the Week. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, the man that just got back from outer space, Casey Oxenine. Wow. Well, I've been on a little trip. Uh, yeah. Of course, I had my wisdom teeth took out last mm. week, and that was that was something else. A lot of medication. Um but I, I brought these to you. Just, what is this? Well, it's wow. my teeth. I, Ooh, I told what? the guy, they were, they were getting ready to put it in hazmat, and I told him that my that. co-host could use all the wisdom he could get. Oh, God. Maybe yeah, he could match those multiplication tables. That are, yeah, I have problems with my multiplication table. Thank you, Casey. Uh, let's get right into it with your MMA news, Flurry. The UFC cards have been shuffled more than ever in the last two to three months, and UFC 153 in Brazil is a whole new card. Two things I want to talk to you about, partner. Aldo is out due to the motorcycle accident. Do you think the UFC should put in some rules you know, for recreational activities like, you know, skydiving and like doing stuff like motorcycle riding. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? I mean, that's that's a, a huge loss, even though they were able to really pack it up and, and, mm -hmm. and replace it. It, it's very dangerous, and it's sort of in the nature of these fighters to do such, you, yeah. to be reckless and so forth. Even Halls Gracie, remember, he, uh, he he lost his life in that hang gliding accident. So mm -hmm. it's part of what makes these these athletes great, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and implement something like that. They've done it in a lot of major sports where they put in those rules, you know, as far as motorcycles. Rampage Jackson, also on the 153 card, he's out against Glover Teixeira. You think we're going to see Rampage in the UFC again? Because there's been a lot of hiccups here. You know he kind of has that rocky relationship with Dana White. You think we'll ever see one more fight out of him, or heading somewhere else are you implying that rampage might be faking is that what you're no, saying he's got something not, up, no, are you saying that he's up he got something up his sleeve absolutely here? not no. absolutely not he did have a tough fight against the though yeah but, i don't know i hope i uh, hope he's back i'd like to see one more shot at uh uh at, at seeing rampage in the, in the octagon before he moves on you know so hopefully I think you can run over to the world series of fighting huh that'd be know. interesting right know. next up a huge show at the ergo arena last weekend for ksw 20 you can check out the results right here of course for the most part it really came down to the triple main event that everybody wanted to see you know you had jerome labanner marcin rosowski labanner had to pull out with an injury once again you get the replacement and it's rodney glunder a veteran rosowski gets the win in this one jan blakowitz defends his 205 title in dominating fashion against houston alexander gets the decision win and then in the main event the big man pujanowski pounding out christos palafis now a few questions here partner pujanowski really kind of surprised me i think we both picked palafis to beat him in this fight pujanowski gets the win what is the ceiling there for Pudzilla? Palaf is a big guy 2565 but he is no match for the strength of Pudzilla. this dude is so strong world's strongest man but the problem in the past has been you know in fights with like James Thompson Tim Sylvia is has his skill really come up to match with, with the star power that he really possesses mm. and, and who knows he made a great showing here he is doing what it takes he, he's making he's cross training he's coming to America doing the, the American top team thing so yeah. hopefully I I see big things for the guy because he is such a, a physical specimen. What if he was to make it into a heavyweight ultimate fighter in there? Kind of like how Kimbo Slice did. Would It'd be, be pretty cool. I'll tell you what else I'd be interested in to see the, the winner of Pulele and uh, Bobby Lashley and maybe a little super fight with that him. That would be That'd amazing. Be something awesome. Then Blockwitz, he looked great in this one. We've heard of Mamed Kaldoff coming to the U.S. You know, is there anything that KSW can do to hold on to their stars and kind of protect their investment there? I don't know if you can. I don't know if, if a, a promotion wants to hold back fighters if they have an opportunity to do big things abroad mm -hmm. but i think what it can do is is assist ksw in really reaching that pinnacle as the top european promotion if he produces if, or if they produce mamek kaladov take him to the ufc and he does he performs well there mm -hmm. then it's only going to shine and reflect positively on the ksw as a whole so it, it's really you may think oh, they're losing mamek kaladov but mamek kaladov is a ksw product and, and i think that it, it will go to to help them shine i think so too ksw mma that is the website ksw 20 21 has been announced for December 1st. Keep up to date on that. Last week's Clip of the Week competition was vicious as usual. All kinds of votes came in, but we can only send that training mask and prize pack to one person, and that person is, let's get the drum roll, Dane Sayers from up in North Dakota, Impact Fighting, a huge knockout. That's impactfighting.net for more information. Well, this week, 12 more finalists. Casey, tell them what they can win. Well, this week's winner is going to take home that Elevation Training Mask, the Shaker Cup with pre-workout formula from Gamma Labs and apparel from Bamp Fight Gear, Crucifix, and Fight Chicks. Well, we have Stipe Miocic after the break, but here's your first four finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs> Stay up on her feet, but you can see right now, come 
Come and switch it to the choke. Wow, excellent transition around the back. Has the rear naked choke. The right arm is under the chin. Switches fully around to the back, and that's the tap. Not normally the aggressor. Oh, what a right hand by Keto Andrews. That was a huge right hand by Keto Andrews. Something happened to Justin Bates when he tapped. Something happened to Justin Bates when he tapped. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. The most spectacular event is coming to Abu Dhabi. Be part of the premier fight sport event in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Warriors. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. And welcome back to the show. Of course, we're going to have Superior Challenge 8 coverage coming up in the third round. But right now, let's shift our attention to the Gamma Labs live link. We have Stipe Miocic, UFC heavyweight, getting ready to headline UFC on Fuel 5 from Nottingham, England on September 29th. Stipe, welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. Always great to have you on the program. Hey, hey, thanks so much. I appreciate you guys having me on. Now, Stipe, Stefan Struve is 6'11 and has a huge reach advantage, which is something that's new to you. How do you plan to neutralize that? You know, Travis Brown and, and Roy Nelson, they were both able to do it, and it was their key to victory. What's it going to take for you to become that new sheriff of Nottingham? Hopefully, I uh, implement my game plan that I've been working on for the last three months. <laughs> so, hopefully, I, you know, but I got good reach and good all around. So, uh, you know, I just got to do what I do and, uh, you know, come out with that W. Now, Struve is on a big 3-5 winning streak, taking out LeVar, Dave Herman, and even Pat Berry. He has shown to have legit submission skills. Is this something that concerns you, and what is your game plan should you end up on the ground with this guy? Uh, it's taking my time, not putting myself in any bad positions, you know, being smart at what I do. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can implement some punching, too. That'd be great. Now, Stipe, we can't wait to see that fight. But let's talk a little bit about the heavyweight division. Alistair Overeem is a guy that's getting ready to come off suspension. And everybody kind of suspects that he's going to be right back in the title hunt. Being that he was suspended for the high testosterone, possibly PEDs, how does that make you feel since you're up and coming up the ladder and a guy's just going to jump ahead of you after he's been suspected of cheating? I mean, uh, it, you know, he, I think he made a mistake, you know. Um, I think, you know, everyone makes a mistake, but he's also fought the best, beat the best. I mean, the guy's been through it all. You know, he's fought all around the world. I mean, you can't really say much when the guy's fought everyone, you know, and beat everyone. Now, most people know that you did come up through the NAAFS, which is a company that we love here on MMA Inside the Cage. Now, they do have a pro-am going on there, and of course, you've seen how that works. Do you think that amateur MMA should be involved in mixed martial arts, or do you think it should just be strictly professional? Um, I mean, I like amateur MMA because, you know, it helps guys out. You know, you're not going to go into a fight cold turkey. You know, you're going to get a pro fight because you've already had a couple amateur fights to get your feet, you know, wet. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for guys to get better and work on their skills and know they're at in the sport. Well, thank you so much, Stipe, for coming on the show here on the Gamma Labs Live Link. We're going to break down Superior Challenge 8 after the break, but here's your next four finalists for Clip of the Week. jab to keep that distance and gauge his distance. Yeah, I think Fallon is better standing up here with Woods. Um, nice left, nice, two nice left by Woods. 
Oh, oh, there it is. Oh my gosh. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and clicking Get On Air. Coming soon, a mixed martial arts spectacle, the like of which the Middle East has never seen. The Abu Dhabi Warriors are coming. There will be knockouts, submissions, and more bone crushing than you can handle. Buckle up, funsters. Don't blink. Abu Dhabi Warriors 1 comes to you live from the Adnec Exhibition Center on November 2nd at 7 p.m. local time. Be there. I think for my son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, I believe him. No, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Watch third round time. Time to impress the judges. Cyrus Fees alongside Casey Oxenheim. One of the first international promotions we covered on this show was Superior Challenge based out of Sweden. They took a small layoff, but now it's a mega event. Superior Challenge 8, October 6th in Malmo. Now this card is going to be tremendous. You're going to see a lot of up-and-comers on this card, and you're going to see some guys that you know. I like the Patrick Valley, uh, Martin Wojcik fight. That's going to be good. Maddie Michaela, James McSweeney. McSweeney always brings a good fight. Then you look at your co-main event and your main event. In your co-main event, you have Marcus Davis, a guy that we've seen in the U.S. UFC, a big fan favorite, the Irish hand grenade, is taking on David Bilkade. And this is going to be a great fight, but not a lot of people knew what was going on with Marcus Davis. He's kind of been in and out. We didn't know if he was still going to be in the sport. Well, what happened was he sustained a very, very uh, uh, brutal knockout it over was. in Europe there in, in a kickboxing match. And uh, he had contemplated retirement. They, they had talked there, well, there was possible brain damage, yeah. and he was he was fearing for that. Uh, he, he said the, his family comes first, and he uh, it may be time for him to, to hang it up. But he's back. And uh, in, this time it's an MMA. I think that's the, the, the better option for him. Um, you don't have to sustain all that, that blunt trauma consistently. Mm -hmm. you, you do have options. You can use the wrestling to take it to the mat. And he's good at that. He's shown he's very good. And he is fighting a very savvy veteran. But I think that Marcus Davis has the better pedigree in this fight. And he's going to take it. Wow. Not, not nice call on that one. Nice prediction. Main event is going to be Alir Latifi, the sledgehammer, the hometown guy, taking on the very talented George Oliveira, who's kind of a last-minute replacement. Remember, this is going to be a big main event for Superior Challenge. What do you see out of this you know, Of course, Latifi has incredible wrestling. He's yeah. shown that time and time again. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. He was the 2004 Abu Dhabi European qualifier. Yeah. So the guy knows what's up on the ground as well, but he is facing George Oliveira, who has been in there with some very, very tough guys. BJJ Black Belt, who actually defeated Mike Van Arsdale, who is a top peer wrestler in his own right. Yeah. Uh, so I think it matches up extremely well, and I think it's going to be a fight for the ages over there. I think so, too. What an event it's going to be fantastic. And of course, we're going to find out how you can watch the fight outside of Sweden in just a few days. All you have to do is stay tuned to superiorchallenge.com for more information. Your main event of the week features the one and only Sledgehammer, Alir Latifi from Superior Challenge number two. It's your MMA Inside the Cage main event of the week. No. I can't say it. All of them are not. All of them are not. Om man ska gå en professionell med match idag. Ja, det räcker inte med att bara kunna ett moment. Man måste Nej. vara allround, ja. Precis. Det gäller att kunna brottas, det gäller att kunna markkamp, det gäller att kunna slå och sparka också. Och framförallt som står under fighter så gäller det om man, om man är det att, att man inte att, att man har ett försvar mot att bli nedtagen. Ja. För annars är man rökt. Alltså hur bra du än fighter står under. 
så jag vet. Healy går southpole här betyder att han går med höger ben fram. Nu byter han. Byter med vänster. Ja. Vet du vad sa ordet southpole kommer ifrån? Nej. Jag ska berätta det snart men vi tittar på matchen nu. Lår spark. Low kick som det heter från Healy. Sen är det väldigt svårt för de här killarna som har tränat mycket brottning att slappna av och slå har jag märkt. Ja, så som kommer från en del, en del håller på med, med bara så fighting på marken också mm. ja, och då som BG så till exempel ja. och då, 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 då det är nog svårt då ja, precis ja. likväl som det är svårt för en k ett fight i här också att det går in och brottas ja. ja. Så att man, när man tränar eh, grekrummors brottning också, de tränar så pass hårt och så pass ofta att det blir, en, det blir så mycket rutin, det sätter sig så mycket bakhuvudet liksom att det, det är brottning, det är svårt att, att ta bort det där. Ja, det är nog så det är rimligt att det är så också. Ja, det är så fysiskt, det är, det är liksom, man måste vara så stark och det är inte så jättetekniskt, det är mycket styrka, medan boxning är mer teknik. Och... Men tveklöst är det så att det här är en... Vad ska jag kalla det? Minst underhållande matchen hittills, i alla fall öppningen. Sen kan ja. det sluta på ett spektakulärt vis, men det händer ingenting. Nej. De har den största respekt för varandra. Möjligen är det en hälsosam respekt, men nu måste snart någon börja chansa. Jag tycker det är väldigt märkligt att ringdomarna inte ser åt dem att börja fightas. Hade det här varit i en japansk skala till exempel så hade de ju fått det. Men nu drar han till angrepp och gör en riktigt bra faktiskt i Liri. Oj, vad lätt han på kroppen. Ja, när han väl sätter fart vid sig var otroligt stark och nu slår han riktigt bra också. Han är så fruktansvärt explosiv i Ily. Ja, jag ser det. Nu slår han väldigt bra istället. Mm. Inte när han står på distans. Men när han kom in i den här kampen var hon egentligen mycket bra fighter. Ta han med huvudkoppling klassiker. Försöker strypa här. Vad snabbt det gick när han väl bestämde sig för mm. att sätta igång. Att tillägga då är att den här matchen går i minus 100 kilo som har killarna i tunga. Så snabb för att vara så pass stor också. Ja. Tre och fyra i ordningen. Rond två då. Ile Latifi mot Roman Milhoka. Och det är svensken som vi har till vänster i bild nu. Båda killarna har brottningsbakgrund och de gör sin professionella debut här ikväll. Det är en hakare som måste prestera, någon som ligger under. Och som dessutom är på bortaplan. Vi är riktigt hjälp som brukar göra en bra spelare. Vi ser explosiv och tost. Sen är han så stark. Han kastar honom som en vante och det är ingen liten gosse, den är Roman med Håka. Mycket explosiv nedtagning. Alltså, otroligt stark. Han är helt slut i Lers. Se han mot kroppen. Han är helt slut i Lers. Han ser eh, mörkt ut och den ska väl domaren kliva in snart va? 3-4 va? Då fick han vakna till liv igen Roman. Ja. Han har liksom ingen... En antingning på försvaren så han... Roman utan han ligger bara och tar stryk. Det, han har nog fått... Han har fått mer än nog av Lilla Tiffy. Ili jobbar bra med Gunnar Pound här. Bara jobba på han! Och så jobbar du! Och så jobbar du! Roman drar guard här på Ili. Guard är alltså när man är i mellanbenen på någon. Och det är bra smällare. Riktigt grym vänsterkrok som faktiskt tuffaste knockouten hittills. Tveklöst så under galan. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking get on air.
Abu Dhabi. Be part of the premier fight sport event in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Warriors. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Wow, what a show this week, Case. It's been a good one. Before we wrap it up, let's see our final four finalists for Clip of the Week. Nick Chrissy is hurt bad. a dozen a dirty dozen let's see them all one by one MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and get your vote in so we can send out another huge prize package and get your videos in for next week. Find us and like us on Facebook. Follow us at MMAITC on Twitter. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. And yeah, go vote on Clip of the Week. I'm Cyrus Fee. I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week. Inside the Cage.